Good morning. Welcome to church. I'm your pastor, Pastor Tim Turner. Let's start by singing a familiar song together. give ourselves fully to you not because we first loved you not because we first called you friend but by God, by God because you first loved us you first called our name so we give ourselves fully to you father it's in the name of the father son and holy spirit we pray amen Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, friends, here on this Pentecost Sunday, a Sunday where we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit, you can, you can tell from the altar that, that it's set up to remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. We're still taking a break, a, a small break from the Revelation series, and uh, I'm going to read a passage from Galatians chapter 5 and then a psalm from Psalm 57. Um, they both pair together this morning. So this is Galatians 5. Live by the Spirit, I say, do, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, 
to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, caressing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. And now for Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purposes for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among the lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path. They have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O oh harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O oh Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me praise his holy name. Except praise isn't always easy, is it? I mean, surely praise comes easy when, when our bank account looks good. Surely praise comes easy when our, our family has its act together. Surely praise comes easy when the stock market's up, the gas prices are down, when our health is at a high, and our morning medicine at an all-time low. Surely praise comes easy when we find ourselves at the clear skies of the mountain summit. Life on this side of heaven never quite seems to stay with that cloudless day, does it? And in the chaos of the moment, in the middle of the storm, praise to God is not always the first thing on our lips. Now, I love this psalm of David, especially for, for Pentecost reflections. I mean, it's rich with an honesty about our daily life and what it means to give ourselves to God in our daily lives. Awake, my soul, David writes. Awake, O oh harp and lyre. David knows he's still asleep. He knows the pull of the chaos of everyday life, the strain of the storm. He knows the temptation of, of letting the moment, the strain of the moment, rule him. 
of powering through in his own strength, of forgetting to hit his knees and turn it all to God. He knows what's still asleep. Awake, O oh my soul, David says. And if anyone knows that strain, it's bound to be David. Because truly David was dealing with more than just everyday life. As he pins these words to the psalm, as he strums out the chords on a shepherd's lyre, we can hear the echoing drip, drip, drip. As David sits in a cave, the water of the cave would have been dripping in the distance. David's warrior man would have gathered close in that dark cave, sitting in muffled, murmuring conversation, wondering together what the night might hold for them, wondering when King Saul was going to finally overtake them. You see, they had been running for their lives, and not for good reason. Saul's jealousy of David's fame had, had led Saul on a mindless, bloodthirsty hunt for David's life. And yet, where do we find David? Strumming up praise, even in the dark cave, surrounded by enemies, pinning poetry of God's promises, even when walking through the valley of the shadow of death. If anyone needed to be pressed by the strain, if anyone was going to be impatient or angry or lash out in a lack of trust in God, it was David in the pressing of that cave. But where do we find David? I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purposes for me. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. But be exalted, O God. I will sing and make melody, David says. God will send forth his steadfast love and faithfulness, David reminds us. So here I stand. My heart is also steadfast. And we got to ask, how does David even pray this kind of prayer? How does David have this kind of peace? How does David have this joy, this praise on his lips? Because if we're honest, it doesn't quite make sense. I mean, with all the chaos in this life, and especially the type of pressing David was living in, he should not have been capable of that type of praise. But here he stands in the dark cave, with powerful praise, pushing past despair. Praising God, though, is often the very last thing on our minds. I mean, let's make this really real for us. When a quick moment of miscommunication turns friends against each other, when anger hits deep in the chest, we want to fly off the handle in defense of our view, when the pressing of relationships gets to us. Praising God is easy, right? <laughs> when the tire goes flat, when the job hits a dead end, when the news speaks yet another trauma, when death hits far too close to home, when the pressing of life gets to us, praising God is easy, right? Far from it. Praising God in all seasons sometimes feels like an impossible task. Awake, my soul. Awake, O oh heart and life. Even David knew what was still asleep. Today, Pentecost Sunday, it's all about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I can't help but think about these moments of pressing in our lives when I think about that sweet gift of the Holy Spirit. 
I can't help but think about in my own life the times that I need to cry out, Awake, my soul! Awake, O oh heart and a liar in the middle of my own pressing. How desperately we need the aid of God, the grace of God. You see, when peace and joy feel far from my grasp, come, Holy Spirit, come. When love and kindness are the very last rule that I want to live by, come, Holy Spirit, come. When patience and faithfulness and self-control seem far weaker than the temptations facing me, come, Holy Spirit, come. When the pressing of life is pressing into us, where do we turn for our response? Look with me again at that passage from Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit at work within us. And can we speak the truth a little bit? David was not able to praise God in all seasons. In the strength of our own fallen human struggle, it's futile. Without God, we're helpless. Joy fades to despair. Peace becomes chaos. Love and kindness are traded for hate speech. Generosity becomes self-seeking. And temptation of sin holds a far greater power than self-control of gospel life. All when we rely in our own strength. By his own power, David could never find himself praising God in the dark cave of captive hiding in the pressing of this life. But I can hear the swelling echo. As David picks up that shepherd's lyre, I can hear the reverberation off the walls of the cave. David says, awake, my soul. Awake, O harp. And liar, God, come to my aid. Help me even sing. Help me get the song out, God. Help me turn my heart to you in this dark, pressing cave. See, David wasn't singing in the strength of self. He wasn't crying out to, the, to, to, to himself to save. And so even in the Old Testament, we see the wind of the Holy Spirit sweep across the strings of David's inward heart. They set a net for my, my steps, David says. My soul was bound down, David says. But my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. For your steadfast love, David prays, is as high as the heavens. Be exalted, O God above the heavens. See, that's why the Apostle Paul in, in Galatians calls it fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He doesn't say these are the, the fruits of good moral, moral fiber. <laughs> These are the, the, the offshoots, the results of working hard at it. These are the, the, the natural, natural victories 
of, of giving our best shot at not being angry, of giving our best shot at being patient, of giving our best shot at grabbing hold of peace. That's not what he says, is it? He says, these are the fruits of the spirit of the living God. They are evidence of God at work. They are outcomes of a life that is guided by the spirit of God. And that, that has some joyous benefits to it. That means anger doesn't have to win. That means peace can, in fact, supplant chaos. That means joy can indeed reign even in the fiercest storm. Because we don't sit in the dark cave surrounded by enemies as if the only weapon at our disposal is what little moral fiber we can muster up. Far from it. Because of Christ's resurrection, sin and death are no longer the inevitable end of our story. It doesn't matter what kind of pressing this life gives us. The flesh does not have to win. Our fallen struggle does not have to win the power over us. You see, this is the power of God in us. This is what it means to walk in the Spirit of God. This is what Pentecost is all about. This is where we see the Holy Spirit most clearly at work. See, from, from time to time, I hear people say something like this. They say, Pastor Tim, we hardly ever talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about the Father, and we, we certainly talk about Jesus, the Son, but we hardly ever talk about the Holy Spirit. But friends, we talk about the Holy Spirit nearly every Sunday morning. When we have peace that passes understanding, that's the Holy Spirit. When we have joy that comes out of nowhere, that's the Holy Spirit. When we find forgiveness that we never thought would ever come, that is a wind of the Holy Spirit at work within us, loving where hate once dominated, giving generously when we once were self-seeking, having self-control to hold that temptation at bay. These are all signs of the Holy Spirit at work within us and within our world. That's what it means to have to walk in the Holy Spirit. These are fruits of the Spirit. That's why David could sit in the cave and cry out to God, Awake, O my soul, and find such peace, even in such desperate times, such joy, patience, love even. Love even. I want to read that passage from Galatians one more time because I find it free. Listen to, to this, this passage. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's sing one more song together. It's a good one.
let thy goodness, like a friend, find my wandering heart to me. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. But here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it. Friends, may we go from this place walking truly in the power of the living God, giving ourselves fully to the work of the Holy Spirit in us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.